Welcome back to the Ultraviolet Tide. Today's episode is a little bit different because we are sitting down with Allison, who is actually LUV's pattern maker. Allison, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Erica. This will be fun. I think so too. I think this is a little bit different, but it also explains so much about our designs and our products and and what we take into account when we're really going through that design process. But before we dive into all the fun, I'm going to give some brief background so that the audience can get to know you a little bit better um, and your background and, and all the work that you do. So Allison Haynes is a freelance women's wear pattern maker who helps brands overcome technical unknowns and get designed to product with confidence. She received her Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion and Apparel Design from Lindenwood University and founded Allison Haynes Designs in 2017. In addition, Alice, in addition to Allison Haynes Designs, she also ha- um, she was also the regional director of the Fashion Group International in St. Louis for two years, and Allison now resides in the greater St. Louis area. So that's a little bit of background. Allison, can you tell us a little bit more that wasn't included in that about how you made your way to Allison Haynes Designs in 2017? Yeah, so I've always really enjoyed sewing. So that's kind of what got me into fashion in the first place. Like my friend and I would have sleepovers when we were little and we would make clothes for our dolls and um, always just kind of did that as a hobby and got into like theater costuming in high school. That was my summer job was working at a theater costume shop. Um, And then like as part of a school assignment, um, I had to like research different career paths and like see kind of what I might be interested in doing. And I never really thought going into fashion was like a real career. I thought it was like being an actor where you either made it big or you're like a starving artist for your whole life. (laughs) Um, So I wasn't really sure like, is that like a legit thing I can go to school for? And turns out like, yes, there's lots of different careers in fashion. And I was really drawn to more of the technical side of things and did end up going to school, like you said, for fashion design, but um, really enjoyed the technical pattern making classes and tech design classes the most. And so kind of fell into that side of the industry and got a job after school um, at a St. Louis local company here that um, kind of a smaller company. So I was involved in a lot of a lot of the steps of production and design I really got to see like what it takes to um, bring a product or bring an idea from concept to, you know, the final product and how it's sold and, and all of that. So it was super exciting and great. Um, great experience there. And so I was there for about three and a half years and then decided um, I I wanted to kind of continue growing my career and and learning more. And because it was a small company, there wasn't really opportunity to kind of like move up or shift roles in Mm. there. So um, yeah, I started my own, my own company and wasn't really sure exactly like what my niche or specialty would be at when I first started, just because like learning how to start a business and I'm sure you can relate. It's like, you've got the whole, um, like your, your, your specialty and your product area, but then there's the whole like running a business side of things, learning that too. But realized that really the, my like sweet spot was like, I enjoy figuring out how to make things, not what to make. So, and Mm. a lot of designers are, you know, have, have these great ideas of what they want to make, but then it's all those like nitty gritty details or like the number side of thing and the sizing and, and just all those details where that are like overwhelming or they're just not sure, don't want to spend their time um, on that piece. And so that's really the sweet spot of what I help brands on is is all the the details of getting their design to production confidently so it's been it's been a fun uh, six years doing that now so yeah that's awesome and that's precisely why I reached out to you a couple years ago was that I I have an understanding of fashion I grew up sewing but I didn't know all of the technical aspects that go into it and I think a lot of consumers aren't typically aware of all the things that go behind the scenes. So like, Mm -hmm. how do you get the fit right? How do you do the sizing? How do you grade the pattern? Like the pattern making process as a whole was something that, I mean, I had a very, very surface level knowledge of it. And I knew if I did it by myself, I was going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, a lot of people like their their view of what fashion is like on the inside is like from watching Project Runway or something where it's like these right. creative designers <laughs> just like whip together these amazing outfits and, you know, 10 hours and it right. walks the runway. <laughs> and, you know, the reality is that there's there's so much more that sometimes happens for runway shows. But in terms of like bringing a product to market, bringing it to consumers, um, really solving a problem with the product, like more than like a visually beautiful piece, but um, to, yeah, to solve a problem it involves a lot more behind the scenes than I think the average person realizes. For sure. It was even more than I even realized getting into it, um, which is why I was glad I had someone helping me out and kind of guiding me through the process. But I'm curious because, you know, you graduated with this fashion degree. You started working in the industry before you launched off to do your own thing. And Mm -hmm. did you kind of have like some pet peeves in the industry or things that you were like, huh, that's so weird that this is done this way. I would definitely do it you know, in a different way or with a different emphasis on fit or, you know, sustainability or something like that. Did you run into a lot of kind of pet peeves of things in the industry that you weren't really a fan of? Um, Yes and no. So I, I, because I worked for a smaller company here and was involved in a lot of the process, like I did get to have a little bit more of those conversations and see like how how does my work affect you know the people producing the garments or how does my um, you know how is it received by the boutique owners or because it was wholesale and retail this brand sold wholesale and retail um, as well as consumers so I was lucky enough to kind of have a little bit more of that um, dialogue kind of between departments and and which I really be able you know enjoy to be able to get that feedback to be able to make a product that really you know, fills a need and people want to wear and not just because I liked the design or whatever. Um, so in, in that case, probably I didn't run into that as much as I I think would have if I was like in a big company and you're much more like isolated and insular and, um, you know, the scale is larger in a larger company. So you're seeing the impact of, you know, a poor choice at a, at a much higher scale than with a smaller company. Um, but there were certainly things where, like, I wanted to be able to improve the process. And I was able to do some of that at the job I was at because it was a smaller team. We were able to kind of make changes to our process. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoy being able to, um, get the fit right. Like you said, and really pay attention to who the customer is, learn as much about them as I can, um, because even things that don't seem related to making clothing or don't seem related to mm. clothing can sometimes, you know, clue in um, information that would help make the product really, you know, a beautiful product and, and a really desirable product and something that the customer will really value. Um, it's those tiny things where it's like being able to have the time to have discussions around things that seem trivial, maybe, um, mm-hmm. and then really spend time getting the fit right. And I specialize in women's apparel. So it's a lot about fitting curves and and understanding the body of different women of all sizes and how, you know, si- how, how can we size this pattern and how can we create the grading of, of the pattern in order to really fit each each person each size um just as well as in the size that we're fitting in and so yeah there's kind of just like endless endless learning in that area where um being having my own company i'm able to devote time to that and research to that and um be able to work with brands who also value that in in how they create their products and you know i do personally care about sustainability and fashion and so um being able to not only work with brands who also care about that and kind of choose the clients who are the best fit in terms of the product they're making and the values that they have in their approach to design and and production but also in in just how yeah how the you know communication is and um being able to advise like all those tiny details that don't maybe seem significant or don't maybe seem to have an impact on some of Mm -hmm. these larger issues and values like often do and so being able to 
have those kind of discussions with brands and see how can we make small choices throughout the design and development process to really fulfill and fit the customer um, as well as the brand's goals and the lifestyle of the customer and the, even the lifestyle of the, the brand's designers and founders of you know what type of what type of impact do they want their company to have and, and how they want to portray themselves to the world. And so kind of all of that is wrapped up into the design of the you know product and the discussions I get to have with brands now that I kind of can, it can build a process around those things being on my own. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, those discussions are so important, especially for, you know, you work with a lot of small businesses like ours that fit is kind of make or break if we launch a product Mm -hmm. and pour all this money into it but then it doesn't sell because people don't like the fit of it i mean that can make small businesses go under really really quickly Mm -hmm. so those initial conversations that you know before we even talked about the product we talked about what is the customer who is the customer what do they want how do they like things to fit and Mm -hmm. if you don't have those conversations before you start designing you might not have a grasp of who you're actually designing for. Yeah, it's so much more difficult. Like in instances where there isn't a clear understanding of the customer or even what purpose this design is serving, like where it's going to be worn, how it's going to be used, it's so much more difficult because then there's so many ideas that you have as as a designer and to be able to narrow something down and like curate the features down to like, this is what will add value for the customer versus these other features, which may look cool, but like aren't really adding anything other than extra cost to that product. Mm -hmm. Um, It, you know, it makes it so much more easy to make the decisions of, okay, do we include this? Do we not include this? Do we save this idea for a future design or maybe scrap it all together? Or like, no, this 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 design needs to have these things. Um, knowing about like how it's going to be used and who who is going to be wearing it and how the, yeah where they're going to wear it really helps focus down those all those ideas into something that is simple and elegantly like functional and beautiful. Um, Mm Because like, yeah, over designing gets expensive, it gets confusing, you go back and forth about, do we want this? Or do we want that? And like, just complicates the process without bringing value to the brand or the customer in the end. So that's Mm -hmm. a great point. Yeah, I I agree with the, you know, adding items that just drive up costs, but your consumer might not even want them. I know we went through so many thoughts when we were designing the tennis dress about having Mm -hmm. a zipper in the neckline versus having it open, having spandex, having pockets. Um, We even change the fit of it. So now that it has the final version has a seam in the back and it didn't originally have that. Um, Mm -hmm. So let's do kind of a deep dive into behind the scenes and kind of going through the process. So it started with, I think we had an initial call and we talked about sketches and mood boards and I filled out a survey. Was that the first step? Am I remembering correctly? Yeah. So yeah, initial conversation just to see if we're a good fit to work together. Then after that, yeah, we went through kind of all the, all your designs, the, the concept of it, you know, I, I, I'm, I asked a bunch of questions about your brand and, and your customer again, just so I understand, um, yeah, we're on the same page about what is the goal for this piece? What are we wanting out of it? How, you know, what fit are we looking for? You know, within the design, is this looser fitting, tighter fitting? Um, yeah, where's it going to be worn? All of that. So yeah, kind of going through all those questions, both um, in detail about the design itself, and then also just more in general, higher level about how does this fit? within your goals in your business as well as in the customer's life so that's exactly right yeah so we started there and i know that you know going through a couple different iterations of what we thought we wanted we were polling our audience throughout the entire process because it became one of those situations where i was like i think i know what they want but i might as well just ask them and Mm -hmm. and let's see and i think by doing that and by putting so much attention and love into the pattern i mean I take these dresses to shows and people rave about how they fit, how they feel, how they look. 
And it is like one of the most reassuring things ever that, oh, okay, our time and energy and all of those things we just mm-hmm. spent so much time and energy focusing on are, we did it right. People, people love it. Well, I'm so glad to hear that, like, even a couple years later, um, you're still getting that wonderful feedback because that's the goal, right, is to, um, for the garment to be something where people love to wear, but don't have to think about it when they're wearing it. They're not like having to adjust it or be like, oh, I wish this had whatever. Um, right. Yeah, I know we went back and forth so many times on like, do we put pockets in the side seams or do we right. not? And you, you mm-hmm. and Sninder were like, let's just ask our audience. And I think it was it like a unanimous, yes, we want pockets. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah, because it's always the debate. Like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pro pocket person for sure. Mm-hmm. But I know there are some women because there's another brand that I work with where it had similar style of pockets in the side seam, and people are like, "Oh, we really want pockets," and then we add pockets. But then there are all those people who are like, oh, "No, I don't want extra bulk, or I don't want to put right. stuff at my hips because I don't want any more like bulk mm-hmm. at my hips." And so. Yeah, there always is that debate of like for your customer and audience, like what is the right choice for them? Because there's never a simple Mm -hmm. like everybody's going to want this. Everybody's not going to want this most of the time. So, Right. No, I agree. And that's something I really had to hone in on is because you're putting so much money and time and energy into it. You want everyone to love it. But what I started to realize Um, I do a lot of markets. So people try on the product, they ask questions and stuff in person. And I've learned a lot about what our customers actually want. And if someone comes who's a little bit taller, I know that they should size up. If someone's a Mm -hmm. little bit more petite, I know that they'll be directly in line because I'm petite and I was the fit model for it. So all Mm -hmm. of those things allow me to answer those questions and know about the garment and in a level of detail that I wasn't able to before. And I think customers have like a lot of comfort in that. So like when you can talk about the product and say like, yep, we had the pattern design and then I switched the fabric and then we went back and we made changes. I mean, that just shows the level of, of detail and commitment. Mm -hmm, For sure. And, and I bet that makes like, or I guess, can I ask you like, how does that, the difference between, cause you had done some other products um, before Mm -hmm. we'd worked together on this tennis dress of what was the difference that you felt between, you know, not having that level of detail and not having that level of detail? Like, did it change how you approach talking to customers about those pieces? Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. We, so with our previous designs, we were so limited in what we could do. So there were changes I wanted to make, but I physically couldn't make them because they wouldn't allow us to do it, which is, the most frustrating thing ever when people are giving you feedback and you want to act on it. I mean, I know we got feedback to put thumb holes in our shirts. I'm like, I want to do that so badly, but I can't. And to go from that to a process where it's like, okay, you can do anything. We can make anything work. Just Mm -hmm. kind of that mindset shift was one super exciting, but also I was like, oh man, we hold so much power right now. (laughs) We, uh, we can make this into anything we want, but that this tennis dress is the product that we get the most comments and compliments and feedback on positive feedback on by a long shot that it's their favorite product and people would buy it again and they want it in more colors and all of that feedback that well of course people love the former products which we appreciate this one definitely stands out and I'm excited for, we didn't just design the tennis dress. We designed another product too, that we have been waiting to try and launch as, you know, we get our financial bearings together, but it was a very similar process with that piece too, where we talked about Mm -hmm. the intent and the purpose and how we wanted it to fit and look and feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and function too. And, and even, you know, for your customer wanting sun protection, it's, you know, even like the collar Mm -hmm. on the tennis dress or like how high of a collar, like we didn't want it too high where it's, you know, going to look floppy or oversized, but like high enough to like protect your neck and just like mm-hmm. every tiny detail and even like the depth of the little keyhole, like, can you still get it over your head comfortably? Right. Like everything pretty much is on the table to, to discuss. And 
yeah, you have the power to do whatever you want, but then there's also the like responsibility and, you know, you want to make sure that the choices you make are just right. And so, yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there was lots of, lots of uh, testing and lots of discussion around kind of each element of each piece. On a more personal note, do you have a favorite? So all time products, all time customers, do you have a favorite piece that you've helped design that just like has been really exciting for you? Oh, that's a good question. No one's asked me that. Um, I'm gonna have to think about that one. <laughs> that's fair. That one kind of came out of left field. But I think it's, I think you get to work on so many fun projects and people come to you with like, okay, I want to do this. And you're like, cool, a new challenge. Let's do it. And um, you kind of get to be a chameleon too, because your brands you work with are so different. And even though you are a women's wear pattern maker, every single brand has a different clientele and a different fit and a different demographic, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure makes it kind of exciting because no project I'm assuming is is the same. Yeah, they're each like very, very different. But then also like I am pretty focused in women's apparel and often like smaller brands, like you said, and often kind of mission or values driven brands. Um, who care about certain values or niche fit. So um, I, I'm not sure, like back to your question of what's the favorite thing I've ever you know, helped design. I'm, I'm not sure I could pick one, but I think my favorite projects are the one where um, the brand has a very niche customer. Mm. They're trying to fit like a unique, um, like a, a type of customer that can't just like go in and buy something off the rack and have it fit. Um, right. and then they, yeah, so they have a very specific goal in mind. It, it doesn't like exist somewhere where you can get it. And then I, and my favorite moment just in general is when either the designer or the fit model or the customer tries on the finished piece and like the smile on their face, if they've never tried on something that fits them perfectly before, like just trying yeah. something on that it, it just makes a huge difference. I think like clothing that fits and it's like, oh, the po pockets are exactly where I want them. I don't have to like, you know, my elbow's not up here. I'm trying to get my hand in my pocket or like I'm not reaching to the bottom of my pocket. And, you know, just like the mm -hmm. little things like that where they're just like, it's perfect. And I and when somebody's never tried that before and they get to do that for the first time, like it is so exciting to see their face and see like the smile of, you know, they feel great and they, they feel like they look great too. And um, they do. And it, it's really, that's kind of my favorite moment in general, not necessarily like specific piece, but that's, that's the moment I'm looking for when that's when yeah. I know I have the fit right is when I get that reaction from the fit model. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, all of the work was, was well worth it. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, the fit, I know we keep coming back to this, but that is truly the biggest thing when it comes to an apparel brand is the fit. And it's what really, as you mentioned, distinguishes, you know, walking into Target and picking up something versus walking into LUV and getting a product. Maybe they both are some protective apparel, but they're very, very different designs. And, you know, I feel like sometimes the bigger boutiques and stores, they do try and, you know, okay, what's the, what's the one fit that will fit most people? And that mm -hmm. gets a little tricky because you can't try and fit someone who's petite and someone who's taller. I mean, that's just, that's really hard. And one thing you worked with us on that I was really nervous about was how can we be as in size inclusive as possible? So how can we do extra small through extra, extra large and do it well? And you really walked us through the process of doing it. Um, have you had like other products or other designers you work with who kind of have that that full scale like size inclusivity and what thoughts do you think about as you're going through the process yeah so that's also a great question i i work with a lot of brands who i would say the like some of them will do extra small through extra large um a lot of them will do extra small through 2x or 3x um and i think the biggest size range that I've worked in is extra, extra small through 6XL. Um, so okay. that's a lot of sizes. I think that's 14 maybe sizes. Um, so that's a very wide range. Like, and so in that case, kind of the best way to um, 
make sure it fits across that range because there are different proportions like someone who's a you know double zero and someone who's a size 30 you know have different body proportions um so once it gets into a bigger size range like that um kind of bigger than what um luv has it's it's almost it, it's best to fit in two sizes so maybe fit in a medium and a 2xl um so that you can really see you kind of break the size size range into two chunks and then fit in the middle of those chunks so that mm. you can really adapt the pattern and change the fit for and, and get a better fit than just you know sizing up one pattern um and then for brands i also work with a lot of brands who maybe their sizing stopped at extra large and they're wanting to expand and add some some more um, inclusive sizing, you know, into plus size. And so looking at, okay, what is the, you know, taking their current pattern, then let's grade that up mm -hmm. and then fit it on somebody in that plus size range to be able to get the feedback on, okay, maybe it's good as is, but we want to check it and see how it looks on the customer and fit it with as much attention for those new sizes as, you know, they did in the original you know, sample size that they did for that product. And then once that sizing is established, you know, then it you don't necessarily have to fit every product in multiple sizes going forward, but at least as their, uh, you know, a brand is establishing new sizes, fitting it in those other, you know, once the base size of the product is approved, fitting it in additional sizes to really see, you know, either in 3D digitally or in real life on a, on a live person to make sure the design is consistent across all the sizes to make sure the proportions are proportioned correctly for the different size bodies. And yeah, just make, again, it's about the, the fit. And I feel like it's really like honoring the, the person too, when, when mm -hmm. you're able to say and, and show that I've thought about this design and how it'll best fit your body um, and mm -hmm. how it'll best serve the purpose that you're buying this for and being able to have that same level of quality and fit across each size is, is really exciting and, and a fun part of what I get to do. Yeah, I believe it. And it's so smart to have two models because I think we have a lot of and maybe I'm not speaking for everyone. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. There is a lot of self-worth tied to, you know, how you dress and how you present and what fits mm -hmm. and what doesn't fit. And I think there's nothing worse kind of mentally sometimes when you go and you try on maybe a size that's larger and it's too small and you're like, oh my gosh, is it something with me? And it's so hard because even if you try and avoid those kinds of thoughts, those are the thoughts people have when they're trying on your apparel and you don't want someone to you want someone to try it on and feel empowered and feel great mm -hmm. and love what they're wearing. Um, so having, you know, it accurately, consistently designed so that it fits kind of how you expect it to. And of course, you have your one off cases where it doesn't, but it gets you so much closer to having someone like you said, when when you have your designers uh, see the fit model and the pieces for the first time and they're like, oh my gosh, this fits perfectly. It's everything I want. We want the same experience mm. for the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, it's like, you can't be everything to everybody, but you can be everything to a certain group of people. So it's like when you know who your, your customer is and you know kind of as much as about, about them as possible in terms of their preferences, their lifestyle, their maybe their body shape, you know, maybe it's more athletic athletic of a customer or you know, older or younger customer have different kind of body shapes and fit preferences. So it's like, once you know that you can be kind of like the perfect piece and the perfect brand for that group of people. And mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's maybe not the best fit for everybody on the planet, but you can be kind of the best for that specific group of people. Um, yeah, I agree. I love that. And I think one of my biggest <laughs> pet peeves when I was starting out was that every one of our competitors just had a sheath dress and that was it. It was just an A-line, you know, kind of fit everyone, no structure mm -hmm. to it, very boxy. And I remember I bought one because I was trying to find some protection. I was like, there has to be more than this. Like, you can't just get into specialty like some protection and forget all about fit and looking cute and having it fit your body. And, you know, I think we're together, we're really trying to 
figure out how to make that possible for the industry without doing sheath dresses because I'm so tired of them. Yeah, because you have a younger customer, I think, than, than a lot of the target audience for sun protective apparel brands do. Mm -hmm. And so your your customer probably prefers a little bit more fitted, a little more styled um, fit versus maybe an older customer who is really wearing this as a resort piece and, and wants a little bit more of a breezy, looser fit. And so, mm -hmm. you know, even those small differences like that really show in, you know, how you designed the tennis dress and the other piece we worked on um, together of getting that fit right and getting the silhouette right for, for how your customer wants to wear, you know, her clothes mm -hmm. and, and, and who she is. And so it's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And I think we're doing a perfect job teasing, teasing the other product we worked on. So I think we're going to have to have you back on when we finally release it to talk about <laughs> that product too, because we're, we're definitely dangling that one in front of people. Um, mm. But Allison, thank you so much for your time and talking through the design process and the work we have done together. And if anyone's listening um, and they want to listen to your podcast or find your website or Instagram, where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, my podcast is How Fitting. So you can find that searching How Fitting on any where you, wherever you listen to podcasts or at howfittingpodcast.com. And then my main website is alisonhaines.com. So that's A-L-I-S-O-N-H-O-E-N-E-S.com. Perfect. And we'll add all that in the show notes. And then we also have an exciting project coming up because we did a podcast swap. So we did. in addition to this episode, I'm also on your podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be sure to promote that as well as a, as a fun opportunity to continue promoting each other and continue growing. Yeah, so we, we did more deep dive into Erica's story there, and it'll be out, I believe, later this summer in August. So, Perfect. Well, I hope everyone tunes in. And Allison, thank you so much again for your time. Yeah, thank you. This one's so fun. <laughs>